Hey, so it's methodical, and uh, I thought I'd bring you another video. I should be putting more up, but I take all my time actually doing the work. I posted a lot of videos about my suspension work and chassis work, etc., but I do so much more than that. All right? My primary interest, a lot of you know, is building all out race cars and stuff like that for customers, but I'm really addicted to doing work to the Odysseys and the pilots. And I'll show you a little bit of the cylinder work I do. So the first cylinder here is an air-cooled FL350 Odyssey setup, all right? The head and the cylinder. Here's an Odyssey cylinder that's in production, all right? And it's going to be turned into a cylinder like this with a billet head and a water jacket on it, okay? So there's a lot of power to be had. There's a lot of durability and reliability to be had. And so we got the factory head. All right, heavy, nothing special. Plug's not totally centered, it's offset. Um, you know, not the best for, for long term or power. All right, I don't know how well we're gonna be able to see uh, down in the bores on these things, but all right, there's a lot of power to be had out of these. All right, the exhaust ports aren't super huge. There's a lot of casting and flashing in there. So what I do is, is take the cylinder, um, disassembled, all right, disassemble it, and it gets marked up, surfaces get protected, and if you can see this one, all right, the fins, the cooling fins, and I gotta tell you, the aluminum that Honda uses for these cylinders, it's as hard as Chinese math, and I've said that about some of their other uh, metals in the past, but they are, man. I guess back when this stuff was made, we didn't have the influx of trash metals, you know, that's being recycled and put into the process streams. This aluminum's some good stuff. All right, so you can kind of see what factory looks like. All right, nothing crazy. But this is being cut so I can install a cooling jacket. All right, and what I'll show you is there's a lot of work into this last the cylinder, this last one here. Okay, there's probably 40 hours in the porting work. There's a ton of hours in the uh, cooling jacket and the setup. Okay, O-rings I use. So what you're looking at here is the jacket's been added. Okay, a bung, which I make for the water feed from the water pump. All right bottom of the jacket that's welded on there okay you can you can see hopefully some of the work lighting sucks with this camera all right but at any rate I weld the jacket on and after the jackets welded on I weld on this o-ring receiver and there is some depth difference here, all right? So what I have to then do is I have to take the head and I have to machine a step in the head and the dimensions are, are critical because you're sealing on the cylinder against a custom copper gasket I have made for this setup and the O-ring. And I also drill water transfer holes in the cylinder. So the water comes into the cylinder, cools it, comes up through, transfers into the head, through the transfer, and then into the top of the head, and then there's a plate for the top of the head, the water comes out through. All right, when I'm doing these cylinders, every cylinder, every one, gets a port map made, before and after. All the numbers are crunched, the customers talk to, see how they're gonna ride it, they're gonna trail ride it, they're gonna ride it wide open out in the sand, all right? And then the, the work begins. I take Venomold and um, I do the transfers and, and the exhaust ports and I make sure they're symmetrical. I, I, there's just a ton of work involved. I also do some custom work on pistons. The pistons I machine right now are out having uh, ceramic coatings put on them, but I'll share some of that. Um, and I'll show you what one of these cylinders looks like installed. All right, so you can see what one looks like installed. It has a custom thermostat housing on the top that I make. 
All right, you can see how it looks different um, down in there. There's some other interesting things and recommendations I give customers. Uh, on most of the motors, I run a CR250 um, centered intake manifold. All right, here, it flows straighter into the cylinder. I prefer four pedal reeds and a stuffer that's been massaged. A big item that a lot of people might not think of is the 90 degree feeding the carburetor. So I had the factory 90 degree on there, even with the K&N filter, and I changed that out for a three inch rubber. I can tell you it's not only the seat of the pants, but the overall performance of the buggy changed drastically. It flowed so much air during my tuning that I went from 900 degree EGTs to 1100 by changing only this elbow. And I continued to tune from there. That shows you the amount of airflow that is to be had. Just remember, air has mass. The factory elbow is larger at the top, smaller at the bottom. And although it can help with the velocity of air, the mass that's contained within that elbow has to be moved. And when you have a larger mass present, the faster it'll move. Right? Relative statement, all right? You'll feed your engine easier. All right, so just a little bit of uh, what I'm doing and what's going on. Hope you enjoyed.